Uh, can you take us through just some of the various uh, energy storage technologies from those that would be, you know, uh, quite well understood to some of those that perhaps are, are less understood and a bit more out there? Yes. Um, I mean, lithium ion is is dominant at the moment, and that's partly because it's been used for so many things, as you say, and particularly for electric vehicles. So the production of lithium ion batteries has become um, very efficient, and so the price is reasonably competitive. But there are other chemistries like sodium ion, which are they don't have the same energy density, so it, they're not so good for um, vehicles. But they're perfectly at they will be perfectly adequate when they're. Um, when they finally come in, uh, for stationary storage, for, for use on the grid. Um, and they have certain benefits. And, and there are other kind of batteries like flow batteries, um, where the energy is stored in the liquid rather than on the plates. And that means that you can, if you want to get, say, 4-hour storage or 8-hour storage or 12-hour storage, you put in more liquid. So they're very competitive for the longer duration storage. Um, and as you say, that's just that's just batteries. Um, there's things like um, flywheels. Uh, we did a demonstration project um, um, several years ago uh, where we um, used flywheels um, for stabilising the grid. And one of the big advantages of flywheels is they can do an almost infinite number of cycles compared to, say, bat- batteries where you might be limited to, say, 5,000 cycles in the lifetime. Um, so th- they're very good. They have a... a they're very good in, in, in doing certain things, but not so good in doing other things. Then you have things like liquid air, compressed air energy storage, or actually where you compress it to the extent it becomes liquid, so you can have liquid air energy storage, um, pumped hydro, as you say. Um, there's there's a whole range of um, thermal storages as well, um, which we don't kind of associate with the electricity industry. And I think there's there's two areas there. One is where you can um, have a, a change over as an industrial level, um, a heat demand to electricity, and then you have the capability if you have if you can store heat that you can vary your electricity demand. So at times when um, the the grid is short. You can use your stored energy at the times when there's say an excess of wind. You can you can take in large amounts of, of energy and store it um, as store it as heat. Um, and the other type of, of heat is where you take electricity and you convert it into heat, or you convert it into cooling um, for industrial prop, uh, uh, processes, and you can store. You can store that and you can then convert it back into electricity. So you have a kind of a triangle with electricity, heat and cooling and you can go from any one corner of the Mm. triangle to any other corner Mm. of the triangle. So that gives you great, great flexibility. So there's there's a there's a huge there's a huge range there, um, quite apart from green hydrogen. When we think of thermal storage, what I find interesting about thermal storage is that we have to remember that it is storage. And we, I think sometimes we often forget that, um, that, and that's also perhaps one that's most applicable across uh, all sectors of, uh, of, let's say, from residential, industrial, commercial, because, you know, your home, the walls in your home and your concrete floors are thermal storage. Mm-hmm. Your hot water tank is thermal storage. And the ability to actually use that to provide flexibility back to the electricity system is is key. But it's really interesting the the, the idea that uh, you know when you go to larger scale then that there is the opportunity to actually return that heat to electricity. Mm. So I didn't even wasn't even aware that the concept existed. Yes, and, and and there are some plants that have been developed um in Europe on on that um relatively Small scale, when I say small scale, I'm talking about maybe 10 megawatts, um, but there's no reason why they couldn't be ramped up to 50 megawatts, 100 megawatts. And now you're, you're talking about large scale capabilities.